Should you be buying Traylon Burks this offseason? All that and more in this episode of the Lockdown Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for tuning in. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. I am Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. She is Kate Magic. Follow her on Twitter at Kate Magic. Kate, we had a Thursday night football game, and that's the best way I could say it. That, yes, uh, the football happened. Um, it and it's the over. Cowboys won. So congratulations, Marcus, yeah. uh, chief Cowboys fan in the, of the podcast. To be fair, I win. think we all won because Thursday night football is now over for the rest of the season. So we don't have to watch <laughs> it. So yes. we're, we're all, we all come out winners. <laughs> we all walked away with a win. I, I, I kind of like that Marcus. Uh, I think that's fun, but yeah. I mean, it's still, it was kind of a fascinating game. I think we learned a little bit let's let's start on the titan side of the ball marcus because mm-hmm. uh, you led into the show uh that trail on burks it, maybe he's a buy but i want to lead into that with the quarterback situation there for the tennessee titans because it interestingly malik willis uh did not play the oh. the team decided to roll with josh dobbs who uh was one of my former steelers quarterbacks mm-hmm. hasn't had a ton of playing time but um, he's been a, a fine backup. He's a very intelligent quarterback and he played reasonably well, uh, given the supporting cast. I, like, I, I think I walked away pleasantly surprised last night. Um, but the big takeaway here again is that it, it isn't Josh Dobbs at all. It's Malik Willis. And the fact that they opted not to get Malik Willis reps in this game, Derek Henry sat. So, Part of me initially wondered, like, oh, maybe they're just kind of, you know, dropping that in as a packet. But no, like, this, your your young quarterback needs reps, and you opted to give those reps to Josh Dobbs. What do you take away from that? That uh, it tells you everything you need to know about where Malik Willis is right now. Right, there's no chance at all he starts the season in 2023 as a starter. For them, Mike Brable doesn't trust him. This would have been the perfect opportunity. Right? Like you have absolutely nothing to lose. Let Malik Willis go out there and, and play and learn. And the Titans are like, no, we gotta we gotta find a quarterback that can actually help us win next week. So my guess is Ryan Tannehill comes back next year, if not an upgrade from Tannehill. And that's why Kate, I'm buying Traylon Burks because I think. Traylon with a competent quarterback, and I can't even believe I'm saying this about Josh Dobbs, with a competent quarterback, <laughs> he looked good. Um, 66 receiving yards, also had one run for 20 yards. Okay, he could have had an even bigger day in this one. He had two drops. One drop was well behind him. The other one just hit him in the chest. Like, I think when you see him with a functioning quarterback, there's a lot to like. I and mean, we, We've already seen a big game that he had against the Packers. He played well against the Bengals. In the Eagles game, he caught the the opening drive touchdown before he got knocked out with a concussion. I think I've seen enough this offseason to be interested in trading for him. or I've seen enough during the season to be interested in trading for him in the offseason. Yeah, I think that's totally fair. And Marcus, on that quarterback note for the 2023 season, I kind of feel like it's going to be Ryan Tannehill. Like, looking at their current cap situation, Marcus – I almost said Marcus Mariota flashback to yep. uh, way back in the day. Uh, but Ryan Tannehill, he counts $36.6 million against the cap next year. They still carry $18.8 million in dead cap. So, I mean, really, you're not saving as much as you would reasonably like by moving on. From now, Ryan what about Tannehill. what about the year after that? Year after that uh, still carries $9 million in dead cap, but That's will. Nothing. Uh, yeah, not, not nearly, nearly as bad the year following 4.6 million. So interesting uh, that Ryan Tannehill is going to be kind of tagging along on this Tennessee Titans uh, 
roster long after he's presumably gone. But uh, I do think that just given the current situation, I, I have to imagine Tannehill is back. And I think that, I mean, like, let's be real. Uh, we've seen some promising play out of Tannehill in the past with this team, with this coaching staff, with this offense. I think what they really need is a wide receiver to set uh, stand up. And I think Traylon Burks, is he going to be ready enough to fulfill the needs of, uh, you know, stepping into that true alpha wide receiver one role next year? What do you think? Yeah, I, I, I think so. To be honest with you, um, I I think by next year he'll be fine. Um, one of the knocks on him kind of coming out of Arkansas was just that he's very raw. He needs to learn how to run routes, and you could see that even like his technique, just catching passes is raw. But again, when you are making plays as consistently as he is, I mean the one the one play that he had di- down the sideline broke a tackle, tiptoed down the sideline, and brought them down to the one yard line or something like that to kick the field goal, like. It's a really impressive play. So I I think I am – I'm just really encouraged. Now, what I'd like to see is Robert Woods get moved. He's His cap number is $14 million next year. I still think he's a good player, but I'm not sure it's a great fit on this Tennessee team. I think uh, some teams that are you know maybe more pass-heavy or pass-happy could use Robert Woods, but it just feels like his skill set's going to be wasted in Tennessee. Interestingly enough, so this is kind of a question mark that I've had in my brain. Uh, Traylon Burks coming out of Arkansas, we kind of assumed that uh, he'd come in and fill this like A.J. Brown alpha type position. But at Arkansas, 77% of his snaps had come out of the slot. He was primarily a slot wide receiver in college. Yes. What if we saw him move back into the slot? I know it feels... It feels very counterintuitive to use your first round pick out of the slot, uh, especially with that body type. But man, I have a feeling that if they move Traylon Burks back into the slot, that would probably just lights on ignite this offense. And I I feel like they're kind of getting stuck in their own way. And I think it probably literally just comes down to Traylon Burks size and thinking he belongs on the outside. and look no further than the team they played last night, right? Like the Cowboys have this bona fide number one receiver and CeeDee Lamb almost exclusively plays out of the slot because of different mismatches and stuff that they can do. And they put them in motion and they'll use them in the backfield. Like I, I think Tennessee would be wise to study a lot of like CeeDee Lamb tape over the off season and figure out ways to use Traylon Burks in the same way, because I'm a hundred percent with you. I, I just have faith in this coaching staff that they're going to figure things out. Um, it, it Burks is just such a talented player. It feels like they're going to, he's going to have a big year next year. I'm buying. I'll, I'll buy as well. Um, especially if they can figure out it, even if, even if he's not a full time out of the slot, like let's at least split those snaps. Cause he has played the bulk Give me 45% of, of the snaps out of the slot, right? Sure. That is a fine. Uh, it, that's, that, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Last night, actually, uh, played his season high or sorry uh, in week 16 played his season high uh, snaps out of the slot. I don't have the snap counts from last night yet, but I, I think they need to shift in that direction and stop looking at the man and stop looking at this uh, giant uh, X body yep. type yep. dude. And remember that like what he does best is, is all about that size mismatch and, speed mismatch and put him back where he belongs. All right, let's talk about the Cowboys side of things. But before we do that, we have a public service announcement from NHTSA. Did you know that driving high is considered driving under the influence? That's right. Driving under the influence of marijuana is against the law in every state, even in states where marijuana is legal. That means driving high could get you a DUI. And if you think law enforcement officers can't tell, when you're driving high, you're absolutely wrong because your friends can tell, your coworkers can tell, your parents can tell, everyone can tell. So what makes you think that a law enforcement officer that's trained to do this won't be able to tell? Uh, driving under the influence of marijuana can slow your response time and change how you perceive time and speed. So even if you think you're driving fine uh, when you're high, 
Absolutely not. Because the bottom line is if you feel different, you drive different and driving high is driving under the influence. So remember, drive high, get a DUI paid for by NHTSA. All right, Kate, uh, Dallas side of things, not a ton of takeaways. Dak was pretty good. Uh, 282 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions, one interception that bounced off the, the hands of his tight end. Um, CD Lamb, 11 catches for 100 yards. Believe it or not, okay, first Cowboy receiver since T.O. in 2007 to have three straight games of 1,000 yards. Your guy Dalton Schultz scored two touchdowns. What was your biggest takeaway on the Cowboy side of things? It's Dalton Schultz, baby. I'm all in on Dalton Schultz. And, I mean, it, seeing this game, seeing uh, the performance, it, it just it brings me back to this question of – how many tight ends would you rather have in uh, it over Dalton Schultz in Dynasty right now? I'd venture to say it's not many. And it, it, Dalton Schultz, uh, I, I think, is earning himself a pretty nice contract here as he's approaching free agency. I, I, you know, he's kind of in his prime. He's he's really shown that um, he's got a lot of upside. Six top twelve performances. Um, you know, he's, he's kind of just absolutely dominating. He's got a lot of upside and, you know, I think we have to presume that there's going to be a team that's going to pay him a lot to be a core piece of their offense moving forward. I think it's going to be Dallas. Really? Oh, yeah. that, uh, yeah. Okay. Let's get the inside scoop Marcus. Cause I need that inside scoop. And that actually makes my freaking day actually i like I, that wow you made my day better we're heading into uh we're we're heading into you know a, a weekend i love the weekend and but what i really love is the news that dalton schultz might stick around in dallas because i think it, they know how they like they've been missing a receiver right yeah. like yeah it's, and, and that's the it's thing just it's dalton like, schultz it's dalton schultz and i think they're gonna have a tough decision between Dalton Schultz and Tony Pollard. And maybe it's not the decision. Maybe they, they keep both of these guys, but I do think they're going to prioritize prioritize Schultz for a couple of different reasons. Number one, he's just a good tight end and it's hard to find good tight ends. And even guys that are like, <laughs> that are just have upside and haven't developed yet are getting paid in free agency. Look at Mike Gusecki. He got the franchise tag. Look at David Njoku, who we both really like. Uh, he got the bag this offseason, right? And he hasn't done anything close to what Dalton Schultz has done. By the way, that's a good deal for Cleveland in hindsight. He's he's really starting to come on. But Schultz is somebody who Dak trusts in the red zone. Um, he's a fine blocker. He stays relatively healthy. And the Cowboys like to use a lot of tight ends. So I think the combination of him and C.D. Lamb work really well. Um I'm not sure what the numbers are going to look like, and maybe there's a chance they franchise him again because that number is like 12-ish million. But at this point, I, I would be pretty shocked if Dalton Schultz wasn't on the Cowboys this offseason. And all that does is boost his uh, his ranking for me in Dynasty. So let's talk about that. Let's let's go through that exercise. How many tight, or How many tight ends are there that you would prefer to have over Dalton Schultz. Cause again, for me, not many, uh, we talked about on uh, the show earlier this week, the fact that Mark Andrews tight end one right now in consensus yep. dynasty rankings. Uh, I'm assuming you will take Mark Andrews over yes. Dalton Schultz, uh, uh, Kyle Pitts. I'm sure you will take Kyle yep. Pitts over Dalton Schultz. How about Travis Kelsey, Mr. Kelsey. Aging Travis Kelsey. Um, all right. And I think this is kind of where we're, this is the trickier, it's the trickier place, right? Uh, how about TJ Hawkinson, who's really blossomed with the Minnesota Vikings? Yeah, I'll take Hawkinson there. I, I, I really like what I've seen out of him this year. It's, it's hard not to be at least uh, pretty excited about the long-term future there. All right. How about George Kittle? Kittle, uh, just because of talent. It Actually, Schultz, what's funny is Schultz has outscored uh, Kittle in two, the last two seasons in fantasy, but Kittle just because of the touchdown upside and because of that offense. I'll take Kittle. I love that you're saying the touchdown upside yet. Yeah, I mean, my friend Dalton Schultz coming off a two touchdown game. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, Pat Fryermuth. Mm, now this one's tough, really tough because Fryermuth is younger, but he's with a less proven quarterback to say the least. 
I think I'll take Schultz. I know I'm going to be in the minority there, but I think I'll take Schultz. I, I'll be honest with you. The concussions scare me with Pat Fryermuth. Already has two this season. He had one last year. That just makes me nervous. Makes makes me nervous as well as a Steelers fan. Uh, Dallas Goddard or Dalton Schultz? Goddard. All right. So I feel like you actually have Dalton Schultz right around that tight end eight range. Tight end eight, um, tight end nine. And I, the thing is after like, because I don't think you mentioned David Njoku and Darren Waller. Like after those guys... It drops off so much, but you just want to be in that top eight or nine. And I think he clearly is. So this is three years in a row that he's having a, at least a solid season, especially now that Dak is back. Hashtag Dak is back. I, yeah. I, I'm all in on Dalton Schultz. I think, you know, especially if he's going to be a Dallas Cowboy in the years to yeah. come, watch out. I, I think he's kind of just hitting his stride here and there's a lot to like about his game his upside one more cowboy thing before we move on um malik davis last night he played instead of tony pollard he got 10 carries for 39 yards whatever caught two passes for 23 yards i'm just keeping an eye on Malik davis for a couple different reasons number one he was in a weird backfield in florida where he actually started over damian pierce the coaches liked him more than damian pierce i don't know it's weird uh but the cowboys really like him and it feels like to me that the Cowboys can't afford to bring back Zeke next year and sign t- Tony Pollard to a long-term extension. Like something's going to have to happen there. So if the Cowboys move on from Zeke and keep Pollard, I could see Malik Davis kind of being that new Ezekiel Elliott where he's getting 12 to 14 touches a game and he's the new goal line back. And that's valuable because Zeke has now scored a rushing touchdown in nine games and it's really ugly, but that role in Dallas's offense is going to be a weekly RB two. Yeah, I think that's definitely uh, an interesting takeaway. And if you're going to make the move there, the time to make that move is before the Cowboys make any long-term decisions about what they're going to do with this backfield. Um, I- I'm I'm willing to buy. I'll totally buy. Um, so would cheap. you send? Uh, what are we thinking? A third round pick. I don't even think it'll cost that much. I'm sure he's on waivers in most leagues, probably a fourth rounder at most. I, I think that's a fourth rounder is probably where I would be comfortable. Third is a little too much for me. Okay. All right. Go. All okay. right. Let, let's do pr- some uh, promotion commotion for week 17. A lot of leagues, this is their championship weekend. Got to make sure that we get it right. But before we do that, I'll let you know that today's episode is brought to you by betonline.net. It's your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From pro football to college bowl season to basketball and World Cup, they've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, and we know that you do because you're listening to one right now, you can even find those as well. It's the fastest and the easiest way to get all of your betting info, head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Kate, best part of the show every week. Promotion, commotion. Who are you promoting from your bench or even from free agency into your starting lineups this week? All right. This week I am rolling with a uh, a Packer who I'm I'm not I'm not always in on the Packers, but this week I'm willing to take a shot. With Christian Watson banged up, we've seen him go in and out of the lineup all season long, and they've got one of the best wide receiver matchups in the NFL. The best, in fact. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead. Let's roll with Romeo Dubs, who's going to, uh, I hope, bring some people some fantasy championships uh, with opportunity. Uh, I'm hoping that, um, you know, this is a home game for the Packers. They're, They're going to be uh, up against a you know a, a Minnesota Vikings secondary that can't shut virtually anything down. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, how many times can you put your trust in Christian Watson? Um, you know, we we all know Aaron Rodgers has pretty limited patience, right? I, I think he's gonna go back to the well. And there have been um, you know, since Romeo Dubs return from injury, we've seen an increase in snap count every single game. I think this is the game where we're finally going to see him full time on the field. Uh, and you couldn't ask for a more perfect matchup at a more critical time. 
I agree. I, I just wrote an article for bookies.com on um, my favorite touchdown scores this week. And I think Romeo Dubs is one of them. I think he's like plus 240 on book or on uh, bet online right now. So I think that's a good call. Uh, me, this one. Um, uh, as a lifelong Zach Moss fan, I think that's got to be the answer, <laughs> right? Uh, yep. 36 carries over the last two weeks, Kate. Only uh, 73 rushing yards per game, but does get a good matchup against the Giants this week who are giving up, uh, I think, the 12th most fantasy points, excuse me, 14th most fantasy points to opposing running backs. Deion Jackson, not really in the equation. Jonathan Taylor and I are, I mean, he's he's uh, he's out there in more than 55% of leagues. I think Zach Moss can give you an RB2 production this week. You know, I love to hear it. That was music to my ears, Marcus. Um I, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to shout out a tight end who uh, is on a team that's just riddled with injury right now. Hunter Henry, who yes. is also on the injury report with a knee injury. Uh, we have Johnu Smith out with a concussion going up against the Miami Dolphins, uh, who are allowing the third most fantasy points this year to opposing tight ends. Um, Dawson Knox posted almost 100 yards and a score. Uh, Mercedes Lewis scored a touchdown, the oldest touchdown of all time. Yep. Um, there's there's a lot of touchdowns to be scored up against this Dolphins defense uh, when it comes to the tight end position. I could 100% uh, as long as Hunter Henry is active uh, conceive he would finish uh, maybe as a top six tight end. Um, but again, comes down to health. So keep an eye on those pregame reports. But I mean, John O. Smith, if he's not going to be active, um, I, I think there's going to be a lot of targets yep. up for grabs for Hunter Henry here. 100% agree. And I'm glad that you mentioned the John O. injury because it doesn't seem like he's going to play uh, in this game. I got one more for you. Uh, going back to that Colts Giants game, Richie James only owned in like 3% of ESPN leagues right Ooh. now. Um, I, he's just been getting a ton of targets nine targets against Philadelphia, five against Washington, 11 against Minnesota. Um, in those three games, he has, uh, I'm looking at it now over 200 total yards. He has a touchdown. Just seems like Daniel Jones trusts him. And if you're in a full point PPR league and you're just looking for that wide receiver three, I think Rich James, uh, in this matchup, especially considering the Colts put another cornerback on the injured reserve list this week, James can play out of the slot. He can play out wide. I think he's a good bet to get you five to six catches and 60, 65 yards and maybe getting in the end zone. I think that uh, that sounds like a league winner uh, when it comes to dynasty, right? Yes. We're, we're down to the wire here. And I mean, the injuries, Marcus, have been so brutal this season. So if you guys came down to the fantasy championship, congratulations. Yes, congratulations. It has been absolutely brutal this year. And I mean, it, like in, in my championships, you better believe I have Derrick Henry, Jalen Hurts, and Tony Pollard and probably going to be without all of them this week. So like I have to imagine that there are going to be a lot of people that actually need to start yes. some of these players this week. So we want to wish all of you the best of luck. Absolutely. Well said. All right. That's it for today's show. Thank you for making locked on dynasty your first listen today. Now make your second listen to locked on sports today podcast. Peter Bukowski brings you the biggest stories from around the sports world in 20 minutes, get the analysis and opinions before anyone else with our local and national experts and insiders. Lockdown Sports Today podcast is available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Uh, make sure that you're checking out the Lockdown Dynasty show on YouTube. Matt and Ryan will be back next week. Still working out the schedule on what days they'll be here, but uh, they will be back. Make sure you follow Kate on Twitter at Kate Magic. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore, underscore Mosher. Enjoy championship weekend. Enjoy your New Year's, and we'll see you guys next time.